Welcome to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Theories and Conspiracies. I'm Brian from Good Nerd, Bad Nerd. So season five is finally here. It's finally beginning. We have survived the Inhumans. Uh, if you liked it, I'm sorry. Uh, it just it didn't, uh, didn't work for me. But we're finally back with our team, and we pick up where we left off um, with what happened to them, the abduction. And we get to see the abduction from the point of view of the agents or whoever it is that kidnapped them. And right away we learn things are not as they seem. The, the head of this group, whoever they are, we all assume government agents, we assumed S.W.O.R.D., but the head of it is an alien who's hiding off in uh, human skin. He's wearing human clothes. Uh, I kind of imagine the old Men in Black where he's wearing an Ager suit. But, um, so that's the setup that we get for what's going on, and we see the team is actually put in front of another obelisk. This one's white with three red bands. And we don't know what it does. Um, it's pretty obvious from the get-go. It's different from the previous ob obelisk, which sent people through space. So figuring out what this one did was kind of the, you know, the the mystery that they had to solve right away. What, where were they? And before we get into kind of the big things from the episode, just really quick highlights for me. Um, one, uh, when they are up on the space station. Yo-Yo makes the comment that, isn't this a shield thing? Don't you guys have like another thing like Spear? And that is uh, easily a uh, shout out to the fans who are speculating that this was S.W.O.R.D. Um, Yo-Yo and Mac, uh, right off the bat, were great. Uh, when Mac first appears and, and Dex, the guy who was there to meet him, and Coulson asks him, how hard did he hit him? And he's like, are you kidding? I hit him as hard as I could. That... Uh, Mac and Yo-Yo, just the entire episode were great. They keep bringing these these you know, these pop culture references, the, when the group tries to split up and Mac's like, no, haven't you seen aliens? You don't split up and you know who's going to die first. And um, They are bringing the, the nice levity to the, the, ep the series that I think uh, is definitely going to be needed because this is a, seems like a much more intense season um, just from the stakes and everything we've, we're, we're learning. Uh, but moving along, other things. Um, I don't think the alien that abducted them was a Kree. It doesn't make sense that the Kree would send a team of special agents from the past to the future, where the only thing they're going to do, besides trying to get home, is essentially be a thorn in the side of the Kree. So I don't think it's a Kree. Fitz is going to discover who this alien is, and I'm sure we're going to get an episode of Fitz where it's very similar to uh, Gemma's episode where she was alone on the planet. We're going to get a, a episode that's entirely Fitz. Um, and what he is going through on Earth trying to find his team. Uh, that, uh, those are kind of the, the big highlights for the episode. Um, speaking of Fitz though, uh, how did he get, the, there's so many questions around the postcard. How did he figure out where and who to send the postcard to, where to put it so it would be found so that he could get this message to the team? Again, I think that's all going to take place in that episode that we're going to see that's just going to be a Fitz-centric episode, but um, big questions, big, big questions with Fitz. Now, the place they are, the lighthouse, um, the lighthouse is actually in the comics. It was a space station that was built by Giant Man and Beast, and uh, it was the, the base for the Secret Avengers Black Ops unit, so it's not at all what we're seeing here. And the version we're seeing here, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but did anyone else get the impression that this wasn't originally a space station? It was repurposed, something on Earth, um, especially the, the, I think it's Crater Lake, that postcard, maybe a, a water reclamation plant, uh, something having to do with water and, I don't know, because something from Earth that was pulled up uh, as kind of a lifeboat. Um, but I don't get the impression that this was originally built to be a space station. What do you guys think on that? Because um, that, I think, will help answer a lot of questions going forward, is where did the lighthouse come from? Clearly human design, but not designed for, to be a space station. I think that's the, the 
kind of the issues we're seeing around the lighthouse. But uh, moving on, uh, the people in the lighthouse. We don't know anything about them. The two main ones, Deke and Tess, we don't have last names. IM IMDb doesn't have last names, so I have no clue, no way of guessing as to who they could possibly be. Deke's tech was really cool. Uh, the kind of anti-gravity belt, that helmet, that presumably let him go out into space or something. Um, really expensive tech, really um, impressive. So it'll be interesting to see what that is. I have no idea if he is supposed to be someone from the comics. It's very likely, but uh, as of this moment, no clue. Um, Tess, same idea. Nah, I've honestly, no clue as to who she could be. Um, I admit I'm not as well-versed on the minor characters in the kind of cosmic side of, uh, of Marvel as I should be, but we will learn. We will learn if there are characters that we should know. Uh, that takes us to the Kree, and the, the two main Kree. We have Cassius and his second-in-command. Cassius, again, um, n he's not from the comics as far as I can tell. Um, I did a some research trying to figure out if this was someone we should know about. He just seems to be kind of a regional... I don't know, governor, like he's in charge of this installation. Um, we'll see how he's related to the Kree in general. He does reference Hala, so he, we know he is from, you know, the Kree homeworld, but again, we don't know what his position and rank is in the bigger picture. Now, his second in command, she's very interesting. At first, I thought maybe she was some sort of Kree mutant, and there is a uh, reason, uh, you know, a character that was a Kree mutant, I mean, she was a pink-skinned Kree um, and didn't have the same power set that we see here, but what I actually came to believe is that, and understand is, uh, Kree females often have what's referred to as the seventh sense. I don't know what the sixth sense is for the Kree, but the seventh sense uh, is often a mind-related ability, telepathy, telekinesis, um, mind control. And a lot of times it was very powerful and allowed them to manipulate and control the male side of the species. So uh, Cassius second command, um, she definitely is exhibiting this seventh sense. And that's pretty cool because there's a, it's not just, hey, we want this cool Cree character to uh, have these abilities. They aren't gonna go down this uh, inhuman Cree thing. You know, they're not gonna try and mix that up. It's just. This is from the comics. Uh, female Kree had often had these abilities. So that was uh, a cool thing, and that's why she can do that. That's why she can control those two balls, very much like Magneto. But it, I'm getting the impression it's probably more related to telekinesis, but that's just her weapon of choice. So that was very cool. Now, Simmons. Um, she <laughs> can't help but get into trouble because she's always helping people. And uh, she has made herself the, the new pet for Cassius. And that she is a, a prisoner in isolation. That, that, that bug thing that clearly only, it's got to have some biological connection with him because she can only hear him if he's looking at her. Doesn't matter if anyone else is, it's just him. So there's got to be some physiological connection between whatever that is and Cassius. But that may be more into it than we're ever going to learn. So really sucks for Gemma right now because she is in solitary confinement. Um, and which makes sense. This is how they get these people to be as loyal and obedient as they are, but also allow them to be in their presence at all times and not hear any secrets or any information that might be useful. Now, the last thing is, uh, last two things. The, and these are the big teases for the season. Um, and for the future episodes. Who are the aliens that are showing up? Are these Kree or are these another alien race that are coming to the station for business or pleasure? We don't know. And honestly, no idea. Uh, it's not like Star Trek where we uh, can identify alien races by their ships because we just haven't seen that many. But it, I could go either way on this. It could be Kree, it could be something else. Um, the other thing that we see is the framework has returned, and this, <coughs> excuse me, there's two big things for this. One, it's going to give the team a place where they can talk and plan privately. But the other thing is this is going to be another way for the show to bring back characters that are dead or long thought gone. Everyone is expecting this is how we're going to see Grant Ward again. 
Um, maybe this is how we're going to see different characters, um, Bobby and Hunter, although I expect Hunter to actually be on Earth with Fitz, but we'll see. Um, they, they'll be able to do some interesting things with the framework, maybe test out some of their plans to see if they think they'll work, maybe build a layout of the station so they can kind of map it and try and infiltrate it, different things like that. Um, it's going to be a really useful staging ground for them, I think. Um, and then the last thing, and this is the big question for this first pod of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is, did Daisy destroy the Earth? We don't know. I don't think so. I think it's a, a coincidence, or maybe she's being framed, or it's, they just don't have enough information, and this guy is just piecing what little together he has, and he's mistakenly thinking that Daisy did it. I don't think Daisy did it. But, uh, that, you know, we'll see. Uh, we will definitely see. Now, uh, re really quick. Whatever time travel is involved in these shows, you can, people always get into debates about how time travel works. Every different science fiction show out there has a different view on how time travel works. Even in, over in the Arrowverse, between Legends of Tomorrow and Flash, time travel works differently. So, we're not going to debate how the time travel works and if they've already, like, proven that Daisy couldn't do it because they pulled her out of the past and all this stuff. Doesn't matter. Um, we're, I, I, there's no point getting into a time travel debate here. So let me know what you guys think about what's going on the show and are you happy that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is back and what did you think of these first two episodes and the new direction? So let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my other theories for Flash and Supergirl. And until next time, guys, I'm Brian from Good Nerd, Bad Nerd, and this has been Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Theories and Conspiracies.